Assalamu alaikum, it's here Dr. Fatma. Today we are going to study anemia in a better and easy way. Without further ado, let's get started. In today's lecture, we will study anemia, its signs and symptoms, and some specific symptoms associated with the specific types and the classification of the anemia. We will study the classification with the help of mnemonics so you people can understand and memorize it for the exams. Let's take a start with the simple definition of anemia. Anemia is a decrease in the total amount of the red blood cell or hemoglobin in the blood. A female will be considered anemic when her Hb level will be less than 120 gram per liter or less than 11.5 gram per deciliter. And a male will be considered anemic when his Hb level will be less than 140 gram per liter or less than 13.5 gram per deciliter. According to Davidson's definition, Anemia refers to a state in which the level of the hemoglobin in the blood is below the reference range appropriate for the specific age and the gender. Other factors are the pregnancy and the altitude. In the gender, we have seen that the less than 120 gram per liter for the female and the less than 140 gram per liter for the male. Same is the case with the altitude because at the higher altitudes the oxygen carrying capacity of the blood is decreased and in the female, the pregnant female, the requirement of the Hb is increased. Here is an RBC made in the bone marrow and found in the blood. RBC contains a protein called hemoglobin which carries oxygen from the lung to all parts of the body. We can say that RBC is important in carrying oxygen and carbon dioxide as well as maintaining pH of the blood. RBC content enzyme lactate dehydrogenase. Decreased level of the lactate dehydrogenase shows the lysis of the RBCs. Erythropoiesis. Erythro means RBC and poiesis means formation. Formation of the RBC is known as erythropoiesis. It is stimulated by decreased oxygen in circulation which is detected by the kidney. The kidney then secretes the hormone erythropoietin. Also the thyroid hormone and the androgens play their role. Sites of erythropoiesis during intrauterine life, megaloblastic stage, hepatic stage and the myelite stage in the Adults and of the long bones like the femur, humerus, skull, vertebrae, ribs and sternum and pelvis and in the children, all bones with the red bone marrow, liver and spleen. So here we will see the production of the RBC in the bone marrow. The pluripotent stem cell of the bone marrow differentiate into the myelite progenitor cell. The myelite progenitor cell then differentiate into the proerythroblast, early erythroblast, late erythroblast, normoblast, and then reticulocyte. Ribosome synthesis occur in the early erythroblast, so in the late erythroblast there is enough accumulation of the Hb. Reticulocyte stays in the bone marrow for the three days then enter the circulation where after 24 to 48 hours it differentiate into the mature red blood cell also known as erythrocyte the lifespan of the rbc is 120 days after that it enters the reticular endothelial system destroyed by the liver and the spleen the macrophages so dear friends now we will study the classification of anemia we have divided anemia according to the cause and according to the morphology of the red cell. According to the cause, we have two classifications, inadequate production of erythrocyte and the normal marrow production but increased removal of the cell. And according to the morphology of the red cell, microcytic anemia, macrocytic anemia and normocytic anemia. First, we will study according to the cause as according to the morphology is important and we will study that with the mnemonics. Okay guys, let's study anemia according to the cause. According to the cause, the person will be anemic either when there is normal marrow production but increased removal of the cell from the body 
or inadequate production of the erythrocyte. So when there will be increased removal of cell from the body, uh, the removal of the cell will increase either because of the blood loss, because of the trauma, because of the hemorrhage, because of hemolysis, rupture or destruction of the red blood cell and the hypersplenism, enlargement of spleen. And the next is inadequate production of erythrocyte. There will be inadequate production either because of deficiency of the essential factors, any toxic factor, any endocrine deficiency, when there is failure of the stem cell, disorders of developing RBC and invasion of the bone marrow. When there will be deficiency of the essential factor, what are the essential factors needed? It's iron. It's vitamin B12, it's folate. When there will be toxic factors, any drug, any drug reaction, hepatic and renal failure, and inflammatory disease. A person can be anemic because of endocrine deficiencies like hypothyroidism, hypoadrenalism, hypopituitarism, hypogonadism and reduced erythropoietin production. So in all these conditions, you can never ignore. Whenever you say the person is anemic, you should know the cause. Okay, and we have studied according to the cause anemia is either because of increased removal of cell and because of inadequate production of erythrocyte. So you would see, is there any endocrine deficiency? Is there any toxic factor present in the body? Or is there deficiency of the essential factors? And the next we are studying failure of stem cell. When there will be failure of the stem cells, the person will be have either aplastic anemia or hypoplastic anemia. Disorders of developing red cell, sideroblastic anemia, neoplastic disorders of erythropoiesis, idiopathic refractory anemias, hereditary disorder of hemoglobin synthesis like thalassemia. And sometimes there is invasion of the bone marrow in the conditions like leukemia, secondary carcinoma and the fibrosis. We will study all these types of anemias in the coming topics. Here, how you will memorize them in the next classification according to the morphology of the red cell. Uh, I made a mnemonic for you. You can memorize all these names from there and then you can put them there. Because it's too easy. I think so that you know. It's too easy. I think so that you know when there will be deficiency, it will be iron. When there will be toxic factor, it can be drug. Endocrine deficiency, hypopituitarism, hypothyroidism, failure of the stem cell, hypoplastic and the aplastic anemia, disorders of developing RBC, hereditary disorders like thalassemia, idiopathic refractory anemias, neoplastic disorder of erythropoiesis, sideroplastic anemia and sometime when there will be invasion of bone marrow you can know the conditions where there is invasion of bone marrow like leukemia, secondary carcinoma and the fibrosis. So guys finally we are studying the classification according to the morphology. There are different types of anemia because of variation in the volume of the RBCs. When the mean corpuscular volume of the RBCs is less than 80 femtoliter, it is microcytic anemia. When the MCV is 80 to 100 femtoliter, it is normal cytic anemia. And when MCV is greater than 100 femtoliter, it is macrocytic anemia. The conditions in which the RBC volume will decrease include iron deficiency anemia, thalassemia minor, sideroblastic anemia, lead poisoning and anemia of chronic disease. So how are we going to memorize it? The mnemonic for it is list check caro or the list, specifically the list. The list include L for lead poisoning, I for iron deficiency anemia, S for sideroblastic anemia and the T for thalassemia minor. Normocytic anemia, 80 to 100 femtoliter. The mnemonic for it is HEM, H for hemolytic anemia, F for aplastic anemia, A for anemia of chronic disease, E for endocrine disorders like hypothyroidism, hypopituitarism, Addison's disease, and M for malignancy, 
M for malnutrition, M for myelodysplastic syndrome.